Okay, I'm just going to take a few minutes and go over the types of channels that exist and also introduce you a little bit more to a carrier protein. Um, so not all channels are the same. Um, there are channels that are always open and there are channels that can be open and closed. And that makes it a little hard to distinguish them sometimes from a carrier protein, but I want you to remember that a carrier protein is, again, going to change conformation when you use it. So I'm going to show you a channel. Let's look at a potassium channel. Right, the channel just stays in whatever state it is. And then I'm going to show you a carrier. So let's look at this glucose carrier. Notice that the glucose, cha uh, glucose carrier changes um, conformation. So um, there are a few different kinds of channels. Um, the channel that you're seeing in this figure right here um, would probably be referred to as a leak channel, meaning that it's always open. It's basically like a door, a door frame without a door in it. And things can fit in and out it down their concentration and electrical gradients just at will. Um, here is a good example right here of a leak channel. Things can just go in and out it. Um, they're really good for um, moving polar things through cell membranes. But some channels are open in certain circumstances and closed in other circumstances. Um, B that you're seeing right here, these are going to be what we call ligand-gated channels, meaning do you see this little binding site right here, little sites? When ligands bind to those sites, this channel will go from, for instance, closed to opened. Okay, so this is a closed ligand gated channel and this is an open ligand gated channel. Okay, um, the one that's hard to imagine um, and a little weird to try to draw, so I just didn't draw it, I just put a picture in here for you. These guys right here, F and G, are what's called voltage gated channels. And those will open and close when you change voltage. So for instance, if this cell was um, sitting at minus 70 millivolts, then this thing would be closed. And then when you zapped it, either electrocuted yourself or had an electrical signal run down an axon, then it would open. So F and G are closed and open voltage gated channels. Um, the Oh, yeah, um, H and I, sorry, I forgot where I was. H and I will open if you yank on them. And those are what we call mechanically gated channels. And they're sometimes like in ligaments or tendons. If your tendon is stretched a certain way, it'll send a signal that would be different if it weren't stretched. And that's what you see in H and I, those pictures down there at the bottom right here. Those are mechanical gated channels. And then this one right over here, that looks like it has a specific binding site. What do you think that one is? It's the only one that's left, so maybe it'll be easy. This is a carrier, and when something binds right there, then the carrier will change position and then dump it. Now, what a lot of people get confused is how a carrier is different than a ligand-gated channel. The reason it's different is because the ligand gated channel may bind to the ligand, yes, but it doesn't carry the ligand in. So the ligand isn't what's going in and out. The ligand is just the key that opens up the lock. Okay, and then something else goes in. The key stays outside. Whereas with this one, you bind to the same thing you are going to carry. With the ligand gated channel again, once you um, open a ligand gated channel, it stays open with just those ligands binding until they fall off, okay? So you don't need to, for instance, add more ligand over and over again necessarily. Okay, so that's just a little bit of an intro to um, to the types of channels that exist, and we're gonna run into these channels definitely in the next set of notes. So um, make sure you get them labeled, and if you have questions, we'll talk about that.